Hi everybody, I'm Michael Fudge. Thank you for watching. Today we're gonna to talk about some relational concepts, mainly secondary keys, surrogate keys, natural keys, and candidate keys. Let's get started. Okay, here we are back out again in our example from before where we have my car dealership and you can see here are my seven cars that I have on my lot. And let's talk a little bit now about natural keys, candidate keys, surrogate keys, and secondary keys. Okay. So in the previous example, I set the VIN to be the primary key of this table like that. And if you um, have ever looked at a car before, you would know that on the dashboard of the car is that number, that VIN. Every car has a unique number on there. Human beings, we all know that this number is unique and that no two cars should have the same VIN. If they do, it's a problem. This is a great example of what's called a natural key. A natural key is a, an, a data attribute in life that we all know is unique. Uh, another great natural key is license plate. There should never be two cars with the same license plate. Therefore, um, this is also a natural key. Now, we only have VIN set as primary key, and you can't have two primary keys in a single table. What you can do is set a unique constraint over this license plate to make sure that no two cars have the same license plate. That's a rule that you can enforce in the relational relational database. Now, um, you might say, well, could I build a natural key from a bunch of columns, like maybe a natural key of make, model, and year? Well, you can see that these are two Chevy Silverados, and they're both in the same year. The prices are the same, but they could be different. Uh, they maybe have different options, like one maybe has power seats and the other one does not. Um, but they're different physical cars. There's two cars on the lot. Maybe this is a red one and this is a blue one, right? So they're two different physical cars. So you cannot use these three columns together, make, model, and year. You cannot use those three columns together uh, as, as a natural key um, or as a candidate key. One candidate key that exists in here is maybe all the rows together, right? So if you took um, VIN, license plate, make, model, manufacturing your MSRP, all of them together, you would get um, something that you could use as key. When you're picking out a key, you want it to use the minimum number of columns possible, which is why if you can just find a natural key, that's, that's sufficient to use. You don't want to have to use a primary key, for example, a VIN plus license plate, when you can just get away with using VIN or license plate. That ends up being a, a better choice. So natural keys in, in life, we also call them business keys. Natural keys are keys that just, they're unique uh, by, by, by definition because of what they are, like license plates and VINs and um, email addresses, for example. A candidate key is any column or set of columns that you could use to set up entity integrity. It doesn't necessarily have to be a natural key. It just so happens that th those two or three columns together function um, in a way that gives you the uniqueness you need to establish entity integrity. You're always gonna get entity integrity out of your natural keys, by the way. Um, a surrogate key is a, is a number that is automatically generated. Let's call this one ID and let's use uh, um, auto number here. And this value, when I add this column, is going to put numbers in there automatically. One, two, three, four, see that? Just put numbers in there automatically. And then if I add some new value to the table, like this, it just gives it a new number, eight. See that? And then if I delete this one and add another one, it'll, it'll use nine. It just keeps using new numbers. This is called a surrogate key. And a surrogate key is a great way to establish entity integrity when there's nothing amongst the data you have to easily produce that entity integrity. The, the downside to a surrogate key is you can easily create duplicates and those duplicates might not exist in real life. So we generally, if we use a surrogate key, we need to also make sure we have some kind of unique constraint over our natural keys, okay? 
Uh, the, the last kind of key that exists is um, what's called a secondary key. And a secondary key is any column that you use to find data in your table. So if I want to just find all the Fords, then make ends up being a secondary key. So if I were to, gonna, you know, let's find everything that equals Ford here. Okay, now, now make is acting as a secondary key. It's a column that we use to look up in the bigger set of data only these three rows because these are the three Fords in the table. Let me clear all the all the filters here again, right? So another secondary key might be finding all the cars that were made in 2020, right? So I can go here and now I'm using the manufacturer's year. And is this one in 2020? No, no, no. Yes, no, yes, yes, right? So I can eyeball that because there's only seven cars, but if there was, you know, a real dealership and I had hundreds of cars, it would, or thousands of cars, it might be harder to do. So you can use that as a secondary key to locate the specific rows that you need out of your table. So that again is natural keys, candidate keys, surrogate keys, and secondary keys.